All right, folks, this is what it's all about. Uh, my name is Rodrigo. I'm from Plow, uh, type design and branding studio from Brazil. We're based in Rio, uh, sunny old Rio. And I'm here to show you something that I learned these past few days and I would love to share with you just so we can learn together, all right? So I saw this tweet uh, from Cavalry App. Cavalry App uh, is like a 2D animation software. It's in beta stage right now, and it sounds very exciting, especially for variable fonts. Uh, here's the thing. I don't know how to code one bit, right? I'm not a coder. Um, I know there are drawbots doing amazing things with it, but um, I kind of don't go into that direction yet. Um, so I discovered um, this, this, uh, this app and I looked at this and I was like really excited about it. So what's going on here? Uh, so there's a variable typeface, this is IBM Plex um, from IBM and it's, there's kind of like a cursor thing going on where it's affecting the weight axis of this typeface, right? So this is pretty neat. First things first, Cavalry supports variable fonts. So that's a big plus from Adobe After Effects. Um, also, um, it can do some pretty neat things. And I'm gonna show you something that I learned uh, that I think is gonna blow your mind just as it did with mine, right? So here's my take on this, right? I'm gonna show you the, the final version of the file that we're gonna do today. Uh, and this is in renders, and this is what it is. This is how it is. So I took that thing and I tried to reverse engineer so that I could learn myself. So this is a variable font with one weight axis, only that the weight uh, is actually two lines that come together as one. Um, all right, so that's what we're gonna do now, right? Um, what you have there is like, Three letters, F, A, B, uh, becoming a pattern and then being affected by like a, this kind of like spotlight here. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to do that so that you can follow with me. Uh, and maybe this helps you out on your journey learning Cavalry 2, right? So let's get to it. Um, all right, so I'm going to do a new composition. I'm just going to copy this color here, which I need for the for the next composition, just so that we actually make something really simple. Um, I could actually, yeah, that's fine. I could go here and put it on a palette, a scene palette or whatever, or maybe even the uh, new palette over here. Doesn't matter, right? So I'm going to do this tutorial palette. That's all right. So we just plug this in here we start a new composition, right? I want this to be Instagrammable. Um, and here it is, wait, 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 wait. Oh, here, all right, so let's start, hit a new composition, let's name it Tutorial 2. Tutorial 1 was the one that I tried before and it didn't work out that well. So I learned what I did wrong and I'm trying this one now. All right, guys. Thanks for the patience. And I'm gonna do this Instagrammable, so just like a square, and that's that's where things get fun, right? So the interface looks a lot like After Effects, but um, here you can actually design things by just adding this plus button. And what I'm gonna do this, here is like, maybe just follow along with me later. I, I cannot explain most of what's happening here, but maybe uh, you're smarter than me, so. Type, uh, type shape, I'm gonna do all, hit all, type shape. Just plug one in there. Uh, and then everything happens on the on this left uh, palette. Uh, and we're gonna do alignment and vertical alignment. That's easier than HTML whatever's to make it centered. I'm gonna add like a white fill. It comes out, the, the basic font is Leto. One thing that is really cool about Cavalry is that you can actually just 
drag and drop a font in the assets area and then it will show here and I'm doing this with a beta version of our FabStart uh, font which is a custom typeface we're doing for a client they're really good people and here what it is so cavalry right now if you see my screen you can see a very thin typeface that's because it's actually a variable typeface and I can expand let me just move this and expand and contract on the weight axis and it looks fun right all right next step is I do not need a, a whole sentence I only need a letter we're gonna do some really cool things with it later so I'm just gonna hit like whatever Z just so I know what I'm doing I'm gonna bump up this uh, font size a little bit maybe just like 72 144 just double what I had all right sounds good next step uh, I want this to become pattern right so I'm gonna use a duplicator uh, you can actually access a duplicator which is like a, a thing that takes something else and duplicates it in a myriad of ways um, I can just select this and with alt selected I just click here and I have a duplicator all right now I have nine Z's looking neat already fancy okay so what I need to do right now I instead of having a Z there I want I wanted to say F A B, so fab. How do I do that? Uh, if I come here and I change, for example, fab, that will not work because I, I need each letter to be an individual letter. So I just keep it on Z and I'll do something really cool, which is a text array. Text array. I'm still uh, becoming more familiar with the, the num naming convention here so just click text array and then you have this uh, this area right here uh, which of course is a text array let me just move this a little bit so we can see all right um, so now I can actually say F and add two more arrays or elements to my array F A and B there you go all right so now what I need to do is affect, have this, this text array affect a duplicator, right? So let's, let's get to it. Uh, in fact, I'm actually going to make it affect the type shape. Now, let me just name this. Uh, I'll say text, uh, you know, like a molecule or no, actually text atom uh, and text array and atom because it's like a singular thing all right so I'm gonna and now this is a really thing cool thing about it you can actually connect things um, really quickly um, for example say I want this text array to affect this text uh, atom thing I just come here and I click and drag and I'll actually drag to this area here like this little dot here and there you go see now I have fab working out just like I want it uh, and now I can actually go to the duplicator and figure out like how to make that pattern that I had on the example so I'm just gonna bump this maybe to like 10 or 10 to here um, just like that and it's all of a sudden becomes this crazy uh, cloud so I'm gonna bump up the width and height of the element so let's say thousand uh, maybe 2000 no I don't want to animate that guys mm, that is a keyframe I don't want that just yet 2000 all right so let me bump this 20 uh, maybe 18 and now let's see if 18 works for this too oh not 8 18 uh, getting there let's see just bump this a little bit I want it to be, feel really like crammed. Uh, and also we can do a pattern offset, which is a really cool idea, uh, just so we can make something that's not uh, vertical and horizontally aligned. So just, let's just move this a little bit, maybe uh, say 500, or yeah, this sounds 500, maybe not too much. 
just so it keeps on screen. You don't need that to. And I'm going to actually do this one to 250 or minus 250, I guess. Minus 250. I just play around with this these values a little bit. Uh, I didn't have any value set up for my tutorial. I know that pros do it. Mm, yet not a pro on this one, so I'll just keep it like this. And that's that's all right. Uh, maybe we can just take this a little bit further so that we can do something cool with this. Oh, not the size, guys. Not the size. All right. Okay. So now I have kind of like a pattern going on. Uh, and maybe I just lock it here just to make it more compact and, you know, all right. And just play around with this values, will you? Should have, should have taken notes on this, right? 70, 70, that yeah, sounds good. All right, perfect. So now I have a text atom that's bound to a text array and this same text atom is bound to a duplicator which takes the array from the text and becomes all this uh, crazy pattern thing typographic beautiful and uh, starting to to look like something right next step is we need to uh, actually make something that affects the weight axis for this typeface, right? So we need something uh, from outside that actually affects this. I could do this by hand, which is what I'm doing right now, uh, but it is not nearly as fun as having like a circle around it, just making it heavier, right? All right, so let's do, do this. And this is the part where I kind of don't know how to explain, but um, at least there's a uh, just follow along and let's learn together, right? So value. Um, the guys that over at Cavalry App told me to add a value, which is another element here, right? And then you have these these things right here, uh, and on the value, I'll plug in the biggest number that I can get on the weight axis, which by chance is 100, right? So I'll do that. So 100, just plug that in. And on the offset value, I will plug in the minimum value, which um, I figure it's either 0 or 1. I'll just plug 1 because what the heck. All right, perfect. Uh, now this value is doing absolutely nothing, but um, I am going to make this connect to uh, the text atom, I guess. No, I don't know. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Now we need to make that beautiful circle that affects this whole thing. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to find something that on the center makes it heavier and outside makes it thinner. So there's a thing for that. Of course, this is a very complete software. Uh, you have something called a fall off. Fall off. Come on. Keyboard. Fall off. Connection loss. That's beautiful. Come on, man. Just because I'm trying to do a thing here, right? A fall off. All right, so this fall off is, has to be affected by, or actually, we value is part of fall off, so we connect this here. Not a fall off graph. And this is the part where I messed up last time. So let's let's see this value. All right, and the value is it's actually connected to the 
weight thing right here. So let's move this. And this is the only way that you can actually keep this alive so that you can connect value to weight. This already works, kind of. Oh, I see. I see what I need to do. So here, I need to go to fall off. And instead of connecting this, um, I'm just disconnecting this. Just click right here. And I want this fall off to actually affect my value. It should, should, but I don't know should work and there you have it folks so what i did was attach this fall off to this value item and then attach the value the whole value system to the weight now it's a time where we can actually do some animation right all right so if i change the position on this it'll start affecting the amazing pattern that I have. All right? And this is beautiful. This is the beauty of this. Uh, and you can actually do some weird things, like have the pattern be different, like the other way around, uh, play with the Bezier tools so that it affects a little bit more uh, on the outside rather than in. and. Let me see what happens. I, I don't quite know. Let's just play around with it. And there it is. And it, we can actually change like the scale or the size uh, of this uh, beauty right here. So let's say we do some 360. It's a big, big circle, 360. And that's it. Now all you have to do is actually animate something here. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to animate both position and uh, X and Y of this element. So just with Alt clicked, you just Alt press, you just click the keyframe button, which is always on the right hand side of each, you know, uh, input thing. And let's just animate this to I don't know 20 or something, right? So. And now we, ju we just move this along around to see what goes on. It gives me a keyframe. All right, so uh, my computer is quite slow, but let's see what happens if it doesn't crash. All right, so let's just keep it right here and just play this. Let's see what goes on. Okay. All right. It should be much faster than this, of course. It, this has a big lag, uh, but there it is. Simple. This would take hours to do on any other thing, or maybe uh, a huge amount of coding required, and it's done in like the time of this tutorial. And I'm slow, so uh, this is pretty exciting. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this. Um, finds you uh, and makes it simpler to understand some ideas behind this software. Uh, and I hope to get much better than this soon enough so I can share more stuff. Um, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. If you have any questions, just let me know.